kids. Now this seven-year-old, seven-year-old tortured in a violent home invasion. I want you to take a look at these suspects. Investigators say they kicked down the door in the middle of the night. So a family of four is taken hostage. Dad's beaten, hit with a gun. Then the mass suspects I mentioned go after the seven-year-old. They're pouring scalding hot water on him, holding him underwater, demanding to know where's the money, where's the jewelry, and using the seven-year-old as a pawn. Those are our little brothers. Like, why would someone come in and do that to, to them? Like, to get information and to get money, that's, that's pathetic. So the homeowner is a small business owner, and uh, we believe that this was a targeted thing. Uh, things like this, you just don't drive by a house and say, this one looks good. You're going after something in, uh, specific. For something like this to happen? Come on, really, kids? Those are her little brothers. Like, we, those, like, they're our world. We would never want anything bad to happen to them. It's unbelievable. This is very cruel, very cruel. You heard it there, family and neighbors in disbelief. So are we on an investigative front. How do police track down these suspects? And then when you talk about the seven-year-old, why do you target him? And how's he going to recover from all this? We'll get to all of that, but want to go right now to the investigation and the manhunt that's on. Fort Bend County Sheriff Troy Nels is with us now. He's on the story. Well, let's hit that first question. Any leads in trying to track these guys down? Oh, good afternoon, Michael. You know, we're working it. I said the other day at the uh, press conference that we will stop at nothing to apprehend these cowards, and we're working very aggressively. And, and of course, through our Crime Stoppers reward, you know, it's $25,000. We're, we're pleading with the public, asking for the public's help in identifying these in the individuals so we can bring them to justice. Yep, there's the tip line, 281-342-TIPS, if you have any information. So here's from what we're gathering, help us out here, that dad owns a small business so the belief is this is not random this was targeted is that your yes belief? we believe that okay it, we believe it was targeted they you know we have the the surveillance video of them entering you know going up into the house there were video cameras inside the home uh, we capture a lot of it uh, you know these individuals were in that home for almost 40 minutes and what's really uh, uh, interesting is that they also we also have audio and, you know, when they're trying to get money, and they're really targeted, they're focused on money. They believe there was money, I'm assuming a large sum of money inside that home. And so they're trying to beat the information out of the father, pistol whipping him, uh, and all sorts of things. And when the father said there is no money, then they turn their aggression over to the seven-year-old boy. And that's what's alarming, and that's what's really disgusting about this, mm. that they took that boy. Now, I know your report stated that it was scalding hot water. Earlier reports stated that the water was very, very hot, mm. and we believe it was, but it, the, the hot water was not enough to cause any significant burns. But we do know is that the boy did have fluid inside his lungs, and then he was transported into the medical center in Houston to address that. The yeah, fluid from, in his lungs. From what we gather, thankfully, the seven-year-old and the dad are going to recover in all this. One last thing, uh, Sheriff, a couple of clues that we're seeing, see how significant it is for you guys. One suspect had, I think it was a vintage Jordan jacket with some white sleeves. Uh, another suspect, a white Adidas pullover, a shirt that reads change. How important could that be for you? Very, because the, the clothing here was very distinct clothing, and we know, we believe that someone out there in the public, the, uh, we know that uh, somebody out there knows who these individuals are. And this $25,000 reward, you know, I said earlier, I said, you know what, call us up, let us know who these individuals are, and then go out and buy yourself a car. Because $25,000 is a significant amount of money. Wow. Sheriff, thanks again for taking the time. Keep us posted uh, as we stay on the story. Then is really the, what the horrifying part of this, not just the crime. It's a seven-year-old that's being targeted, dunked in very hot, scalding hot water. Joining us to talk about it, Dr. Jeff Gardier, clinical forensic psychologist. Good to see you in person. Lean on your expertise here. Let's talk. Uh, this is so traumatic for anyone but a seven-year-old. How do you begin to help a seven-year-old heal through this? Well, first of all, let's point out that whole family yeah. has been traumatized. Uh, and even if there wasn't uh, this waterboarding type thing going on, the child would have been traumatized and just with that alone. But now you're talking about with that scalding hot water, thinking he was going to die. There was water in his lungs. I understand he's doing a little bit better now. Yeah. He could have been killed. How do you help someone like this? Certainly the whole family, but especially this kid. He's going to have post-traumatic stress disorder, nightmares, 
um, disruptive thoughts, um, having all sorts of remembrances of this coming back, intrusive thoughts. So it really is going to be about very intense therapy, but first and foremost, stabilizing him uh, um, uh, physically, mm -hmm. uh, medically, Mike, and then with that, putting the whole family in therapy uh, along with him so that they can be supportive of him because he's going to be emotionally unwell for many, many years wow. to come. All sorts of phobias. It's going to be really difficult. And, and to that point, I know you and I have talked enough times to know you're not going to push a seven-year-old. You're not going to hit him with a ton of questions. But when do you, you know, enough time passes and let's say this child doesn't talk about it, mm -hmm. how do you try and draw out what they're feeling so they, maybe that can help in the healing? Well, the most important thing is once this child does understand that his family is there, the family is not going to be hurt physically um, mm -hmm. and therefore he can rely on them he they can be his rock he will begin to uh, talk slowly but surely but that's where and you're absolutely correct you don't want to push him it really is about now reinforcing him to be able to talk about the trauma the terror that he has experienced and the more he talks about it the more you reinforce uh, through letting him know you support him in every way possible and that he will be okay at some point. All right. Well, we hope the best for the family and that they find these. Really, it's for this getaway driver yeah. as well. Great to see you in person. Terrific.